welcome. Hello, and thanks for tuning in to Alks Live. I'm Rachel, um, a member of St Altman's, and I'm going to be leading our service this morning. And I'm joined in our virtual studio by Susie and James. Would you like to both say who you are? Good morning, I'm Susie, I'm the Interim Minister here at St Altman's, and it's lovely to be with you this morning. Hi, I'm James, I'm the Associate Minister here at St Altman's, it's great to be back with you all. Brilliant. And a special welcome if you're joining us for the first time. It's great to share being church with you. We'll be listening, thinking, texting, praying and singing. So please join in with as much or as little as you wish. One of the things I like most about our online services is that the live chat function allows those of us not on screen to interact with each other and, and with the people on screen in a way that we just can't when we're in normal Sunday services in the church building. I love it. It's so wonderful that we can, we can hear everyone's voice or rather we can read everyone um, in greeting, in a little bit of banter here and there and in prayer requests. So do keep that coming. Susie's gonna be leading us in Holy Communion this week. Ems will read from the Bible, Jacqueline will preach, Adam is going to lead our sun worship, James will lead our prayers, and Sharon is going to introduce a craft activity that's quite a lot of people going on. Um, but speaking of craft activities, Sharon will be telling us about that shortly. So now might be a good time to nip and get yourself some um, coloured pens, pencils, uh, some white paper, and maybe a magazine and glue sticks if you're feeling particularly adventurous, I think. So our theme today is feasting and fasting as we um, consider more about holy living. So I've got two questions for you to feed back to me in the live chat. If you've ever chosen to or had to, um, to fast, to give something up, what was the hardest thing to give up? And if you'd rather, if you think about when you've had a feast, like the wedding reception in today's Bible reading later. What has to be there for it to really be a celebratory feast for you? Why don't you pop it in the live chat if you wish. And in the meantime, James and Susie, have you had any thoughts about either of those questions? Well, I guess I've given up the classic stuff like chocolate at times, um, gave up beer one year as well. Um, yeah. Chocolate was definitely harder to give up. No, didn't like giving up chocolate at all. Um, the, the idea that popped into my head for a feast was I spent two weeks in Honduras once on a conservation trip um, where the diet was mostly a variation of refried beans. Um, and so the, the feast on my way back actually occurred in Miami airport where we landed and I bought myself a large pizza, the final Harry Potter book and stayed up the entire time on the plane eating and reading. It was great. That was a, that was a fantastic feast experience for me on the way back home. Yep. That sounds fair enough. What about you, Susie? Something that I found really difficult to give up was I went on retreat for five days and I gave up my phone. So there was no uh, contact with family or friends. And particularly, I decided not to read the news either. Right. And it was really hard to begin with. But actually, what I found really more, in a sense, more difficult was taking it up again. So the, okay. the the end of the fast was more difficult, um, mm. becoming part of the normal world again. Okay. And yeah. feasting always has to involve good home cooked food um, and family or friends. Mm. Yes, yeah. I think I'm with you on the feasting. Um, the fasting, I, um, when I, actually, when I was carrying Isaac when I was pregnant, um, I developed gestational diabetes. And so for the last seven weeks, I had to basically fast from sugar which um so you know cakes and all that kind of stuff i would have found difficult but i suppose because i knew it was for an excellent reason i actually found that much more straightforward and easy than i thought it was going to be although when i try to fast tea as in the drink of tea um over one lent that really was a disaster <laughs> it didn't work at all so yeah i perhaps just wasn't quite as motivated as i was about the sugar <laughs> So let's just have a look now at the live feed. So, ah, yes, doing a traditional food fast was really difficult for Gail. The longest she's gone without eating was four days. To be honest, that's pretty impressive. That's, yeah. yeah. And uh, M also gave up sugar in tea one Lent. And you still hate tea without sugar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, gosh. Anybody else? Oh, Marmite sandwiches. Now, Kevin, is that 
you want to fast Marmite sandwiches and that's easy or is it hard or do Marmite sandwiches mean celebration for you? That's my question mm. there. Maybe you'd uh, add a little bit in. Mm -hmm. um, I did have somebody else on the live chat on my uh, sorry Facebook feed actually say that they did a digital detox um, that they've started doing once a week actually as a kind of a Sabbath type thing which was really difficult to start with, but she and her husband have kind of got into that a bit more now. So that's rather good. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm going to add, um, hand over to Sharon actually now. Um, are you gonna tell us about today's activity, Sharon? Morning, everybody. Today, we're going to be making placemats for our tables. So this is what we're making this morning. And hopefully you've got your magazines ready as well. If you've got a magazine, I've, I've got a free one here that came through the post and we can use our magazines to look for pictures that we can cut out to stick on our placemats. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're going to be doing this morning. Mm -hmm. Placemats ready for a feast. Ready for a feast. I like it. So, OK, let's welcome Jesus into our home now by praying. Lord, thank you for bringing us together after another week in lockdown. Thank you that in the middle of all our worries, challenges and fears, we can know your strengthening presence with us. Be with us now as we gather online, just as you are when we're physically together, and transform us to be more like you. Help us to worship you in all we think, sing, say and do. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to hand over to Adam now to lead us in song worship.
that is who you are that is who you are even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working even when i don't see it you're working even when i don't feel it you're working you never stop you never stop working you never stop you never stop working way maker miracle worker promise keeper light in the darkness my god that is who you are 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 that is strength within the sorrow there is beauty in our tears and you meet us in our morning with a love that casts out fear You are working in our waiting. You're sanctifying us. When beyond our understanding, you're teaching us to trust. Plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You with us in the fire and the flood. You're faithful forever, perfect in love. You are sovereign. down in endless grace 
You're the lifter of the lowly. Compassionate and kind. Oh, you surround and you uphold me. And your promises are my delight. Your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. With us in the fire and the flood You're faithful forever Perfect in love You are sovereign over us Even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good and for your glory. Even in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our good and for your glory. Even what the enemy means for evil, you turn it for our good. You turn it for our good, for your glory. Even in the valley, you are faithful. You're working for our good. You're working for our good and for your glory. Your plans are still to prosper. You have not forgotten us. You're with us in the fire and the flood. You're faithful forever. Perfect in love. You are sovereign over us. Yes, you are Sovereign over us, so I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough, cause He's more than enough, and He knows what I need, so I'll give thanks to God when I don't have enough. And he knows what I need is sound Thanks to God When I don't have enough Cause he's more than enough And he knows what I need Your plans are still to prosper You have not forgotten us with us in the fire and the flood You're faithful forever Perfect in love You are sovereign over us You are sovereign over us Thanks, Adam and Gail and Esther. That was lovely. Thank you to uh, share that. And in preparation for communion now, um, we have an opportunity to come before God to confess our sins. And that's the outward expressions of our own inner desire to have our own way and then to be forgiven. Susie will lead the responses on your behalf. Please join in with her if you wish to. Jesus Christ, risen master and triumphant Lord, 
We come to you in sorrow for our sins and confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We've lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his son to be our saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to listen to our Bible reading now, read by M. And then Jacqueline will go and talk about um, to talk to us about it after that. Thank you. The first of this morning's readings is taken from Matthew chapter four, verses one to four. The temptation of Jesus. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted by the devil. After fasting for forty days and forty nights, he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, It is written, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The second reading is taken from Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 to 15. Then John's disciples came and asked him, How is it that we and the Pharisees fast? but your disciples do not fast. Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bridegroom mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, then they will fast. The final reading is taken from John chapter 2, verses 1 to 11. Jesus changes water to wine. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, They have no more wine. Dear woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied. My time has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realise where it had come from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, Everyone brings out the choice wine first, and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. This, the first of his miraculous signs Jesus performed in Cana of Galilee. He thus revealed his glory, and his disciples put their faith in him. This is the word of the Lord. Why is it that we fast and pray, but your disciples don't? A very valid question from John's disciples to Jesus. Good morning, my name is Jacqueline, and I'd like to share some thoughts with you this morning about fasting and feasting from the Bible passages we've just heard read. Let's start with a prayer. Heavenly Father, open the hearts of all who hear these words. May your message of love and hope be in each person's home this day and always. Amen. 
When I realised that one of today's passages was the wedding at Cana, I just had to show you this painting. If you happen to trawl the internet looking for gospel images of Jesus, which I appreciate most people don't, but I often do because of my school's work, then there are a handful of pictures that always keep cropping up. And this one always attracts my attention. It's called, not unsurprisingly, Water Into Wine, and it's by the artist Morgan Weisling. There are so many things about this painting that catch my eye. The look of concentration on Jesus's face, the look of astonishment on the servants, the hesitancy in the face and pose of the woman stood behind Jesus watching. Who is she? Mary? Jesus' mother, wondering what or if Jesus is going to do after she pushed him into performing his first miracle. Or maybe one of the other Marys, observing Jesus in action for the very first time, little knowing that he was about to change her whole world and turn it inside out. And the play of light out there in the bright sunshine, the wedding party is in full flow, dancing and streamers and people completely unaware of the fact that something miraculous is happening in this quiet corner of the courtyard. Somehow for me, the light reflected in Jesus' face and the servants and the vat of wine is more real than the sunshine, more luminescent somehow. For me this painting is not just about turning water into wine, it's also about the miracle of Christian living, of holy living. Sometimes we are privy to great miracles happening right under the noses of the community at large, of which they or sometimes we are completely oblivious. Yes, it's good to celebrate, to live life to the full, to party. But not if the cost is missing out on the fullness of a life lived with Jesus at its centre. Now, I don't want to turn this into a GCSE art lesson, but what about this one? This one is called In the Wilderness by Ron DeCarney and it depicts Jesus as he fasts in the desert after his baptism in the Jordan. Look at that sky. It reminds me of a similar image, a crucifixion scene where the sky turned black as the sins of the world were put upon Jesus and he was separated from God. Sin is crouching at your door it desires to have you, God tells Cain in Genesis 4. And it crouches at Jesus' door in this painting here. The tempter is trying to persuade him to turn stones into bread. But again, look at the light. Jesus may have his head bowed and he looks weary. But there's no defeat in the slope of those shoulders. It's as if he's taking a deep breath a resigned or aligned sigh before setting off on his mission. And his clothes have a brightness to them, which inspires confidence. It's almost like one of those blasts of sunlight that can pierce a storm black sky is shining on the very spot where he is sitting. So why is it that John's disciples fast and Jesus don't? Why indeed? In New Testament times, fasting was often associated with a time of mourning, while feasting and festivals were a time of rejoicing. At the point where his followers ask this question, John is in prison under threat of death. So Jesus doesn't reproach them for following the Jewish customs and rituals like he might have the Pharisees because he knows 
that they're fasting while praying for John, their leader, and their hearts are in the right place as they petition God in fasting. But Jesus' response is also telling them that there is a time and a place for everything. For everything there is a season, Ecclesiastes 3 puts it. And so neither will he rebuke his own disciples for not obeying the Jewish law. Why would the guests of a bridegroom mourn while the bridegroom is still with them, Jesus reflects. So, hold those three thoughts, events, Bible passages in your head and let me ask you this. What are the rhythms and routines of your life? Get up, go to school or work, meet up with friends, take your children swimming or to dance or football. Those are our normal routines maybe. But what about now? Experts seem to agree that having routines even during lockdown can be helpful to our mental and physical health. So what are your new rhythms of life? If Facebook is anything to go by, a lot of people who are not working are out enjoying nature and taking photos of flowers and trees and beautiful spring images. But what about the day to day? What are the patterns do you as a family or a household or an individual follow, especially through the year? Do you always have a holiday around the same time? How do you celebrate family birthdays and special occasions? Do you always mark the passing of a loved one on a certain way on a certain day? We all have routines, rhythms to our lives that pass the passing, that mark the passing months and years. And living in the UK, uh, we can't help but notice the progression of the seasons, of course. The Christian church follows an annual rhythm, a remembering of key events year on year. Advent and Christmas, Christ being born as flesh among us, Lent and Easter, Jesus, death and resurrection to save us and bring us life. Ascension and Pentecost, heralding the coming of the Holy Spirit to all and the beginnings of a Christian faith as we know it today. It might be that Lent particularly is a season you associate with fasting, if you considered it at all. But as Jesus told the Pharisees, it's not just about ritual and obeying the letter of the law. It's about softening our hearts towards God and softening God's heart towards those things most dear to us. Fasting can and probably should be about praying more effectively focusing our attention on god determining his will for any particular person or circumstance and getting god's attention by showing him that we're serious about this matter as pete gregg of 24 7 prayer said at spring harvest last year why do we need to ask god if he already knows and can do anything anyway. Because asking is intentional and relational. It tells God what we really want and it's also our amen to God's will when we pray in accordance with his desires. But the thing about fasting is, it doesn't need to necessarily be about food. It might be about giving something up that we rely on instead of God. Maybe alcohol or coffee. Or it might mean sacrificing half an hour's TV or Xbox or some phone game in order to spend time seeking God's presence instead. Fasting might also mean sacrificing time to something. Gardening for a neighbour, for instance. Visiting grandma and telling her about your week because she values your company, which both of which you can still do in some fashion, even during lockdown. 
Maybe it's about setting aside finances to run, fund refugees or orphans or anti-slavery campaigns and organisations. Think about it. I want to finish with this thought. Do you fast too much and not party? Or feast too much and not abstain? Developing holy habits is about getting the balance right between the two. And it might simply come down to whether you're a ha glass half full or a glass half empty type of person. Do you have a tendency towards one extreme or the other? It's like the old joke. An optimist sees a glass half full. A pessimist sees a glass half empty. An engineer sees a glass that's too big. The missionary is just grateful to have water. And the psalmist says, my glass overfloweth. Which one are you? Do you remember to celebrate what God has given you? Or do you sometimes lose sight of what God is doing? Do you take a step back from life every now and then? and seek God's plans for your life, for your journey? Or can you see a way that you might be able to make this start happening? Do you manage and maintain holy habits involving fasting and feasting? And how might we help one another develop better practice in this? Some thoughts to ponder. May I pray? Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you give us your example and guidance through the Bible. Help us to know when to feast and when to fast, when to party and when to withdraw. Give us the wisdom to know which to do when and how to develop holy habits in our lives. Amen. So everyone, I'll give you a minute just to think about the one thing that you'll take away from that while Sharon comes to back to tell us what we can make after the service. So as I said earlier, Rachel, today we're going to be making placemats and hopefully now you've all managed to find your magazines if you've got some at home. You've cut out a few pictures maybe and you've got your piece of card or paper or you've got your crayons and pencils. And what, what we're going to do is we're going to think about feasting. Yeah. And when we have a feast or when we have a meal, what we do in our house is we usually set the table out and we put chairs around the table and we put placemats out for people to sit down at those places around the table. So I thought what a really good idea would be this morning is for us to make some placemats. And on our placemats, we're going to draw or stick pictures of things that we can be thankful to God for. Now, I don't know whether you can quite see that there, but it says, thank you, God. And then we have to think about something that we want to thank God for as we sit at our table. So this is to remind us to thank God. So I've drawn on mine some ice cream. So that's to remind me to thank God for food. I've drawn a heart to remind me that God loves me and to be thankful for God loving me. I've drawn a little glass there with some cranberry juice in it and a straw to say thank you God for the drink that we have. I've drawn a little cat down there to say thank you God for animals. Mm -hmm. I've drawn a little person to say thank you for people. And I've drawn a picture of the world to say thank you God for our world. And then around the edge, you won't be able to see it very clearly here, but around the edge, I've written the Lord's Prayer because I think that that is a really good prayer for us to be praying each day, especially as we're reminded that on Thursday, we're starting the Thy Kingdom Come. 
where all the Christians all over the world are going to be praying the Lord's Prayer every day. So I put that on my prayer mat to remind me that that's what I'm going to be praying. So this is my placemat prayer mat that I can put on my table when I have my dinner. And if you're going to cut out bits from magazines, you can find things like I've found some people here, look, and a little girl there with a drink. So that can remind me if I stick that on my placemat, that can remind me to pray for, for the things that we have that we can drink. That can remind me to pray for people. I've got other pictures in my books here. Look, a lovely butterfly there on some flowers. That can remind me about praying about nature and the animals. Or I could find a picture in one of my other magazines that I've got here of some food. Oh, that looks tasty, doesn't it? It does. Some food that we can have and we can stick them on our placemat. And sometimes, I know as families, we can say grace together, a little prayer before we eat as well. So maybe on your prayer mat, you could make up your own grace as a family. I know some people do a song and they do it like a Superman song. I think it goes something like, thank you God for giving us food. Thank you God for giving us food. And then they sing what they've got on their plate. For the potatoes and the fish fingers, thank you God for giving us food. So maybe that could become your grace too. And I've got something else that I want to share this week because I talked about thy kingdom come and us praying as Christians across the world. And we've been asked to pray for five people. Now that might be five friends, you know, or some friends or family members. And we've got to think of those five people that we want to pray for over the next few days starting from Thursday for 11 days we're going to be praying for these five people now to remind us of how we're going to be praying for those people I've come up with a little idea now it's not my own idea it's one I found on the Kingdom Come website and if you check in your in the uh, link below you will see you'll be able to find out lots of ideas but this is just one of them ideas so I thought together with my placemat to put on my table when I'm having my meal this week, I'm going to make a little tray. And on that tray, I've covered it with silver foil, but you don't have to do that. On my tray, I've put my little cross that, I, that we made the other week when we made our little crosses for Palm Sunday. Or you could use your bigger cross. If you made a bigger cross, you could put that on your tray. And around the tray, I've used my little people the time that we made the other week. Can you remember these little people here, these paper people chains that we made? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the names of the people that I want to pray for on my little people. And I'm going to put them on my tray around my cross. So I've got five people there. You might not be able to see them very well on here, but I've got five people on my tray around my cross with names on. And then I thought, well, I could take a little person each day and put that with me and put it in my pocket and remember to pray for that person. Or I could, I've got some wooden pegs at home. So I thought I could colour my pegs in and write somebody's name on the peg and then place it next to that person on my tray. And then each day choose a different person to pray for. So, and to remind me to pray for that person, I'm going to take the peg next to their name and I'm gonna peg it to me or put it in my pocket. And then that will remind me to pray for that person that day. So I'm going to leave my tray on my table with my placemat and in the morning when I have my breakfast I'm going to choose a peg with a name on it. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer and I'm going to take that person, that peg that represents that person with me throughout the day and each time I'll remember to pray for that person. When I see it or feel it I'll remember to pray for that person. Then when I come back at night time I am going to sit down at my table I'm going to use my placemat to pray for all the wonderful things that God gives us. 
I'm going to pray the Lord's Prayer again and I'm going to thank God for that person and I'm going to pray that that person will come to know God and God's love for them. I've also got a little candle here. If you've got a little candle, maybe you'd like to light a candle and put that on your tray too, to remind you that God is with you when you pray. And each day, pray for a person. That's my prayer tray. And also for Kingdom Come, children, there's amazing things on there, prayer things that you can do. So get your parents to have a look on the link. You can download an app on your phone and you can do the prayer map with the app on your phone. So there's an app that you can download on your phone and it's a Thy Kingdom Come prayer map and you can have a look i've got it on my phone here let's see if i oh look it's coming up you can see that you can it you hold your phone over the map and it gives you lots of different things that you can do on the map to pray for so you can have a look at that later on the link below it shows you a link go and find it and there's lots of other different ways to pray as well it gives you lots of different ways to pray yeah. And today I want to say hi to all my families before I go. So I would like to say hello to Samuel and Hannah. Hello to Keris, Isaac and Evan, to Levi and Eva, to Ariella, to Miriam and Benjamin, to baby Phoebe and baby Florence, and to all our families out there, a big wave. And a big shout out to all the parents, because I think you're amazing and you're doing an awesome job. So fantastic wave to all our fantastic parents out there. And we have a celebration in the house this week. We have Elena has got her, Elena has got her birthday this week. So we want to say happy birthday to Elena. And we hope you have a wonderful, wonderful birthday and celebration on your birthday. And last week, I gave you a challenge of finding major, my meerkats. Now, I wonder, did anybody find my meerkat last week? Well, I will be posting on the Facebook page where he was. I'll post a picture, but he was hiding on my street here. Now, I wonder this week, he's hiding again. I wonder whether you will be able to find where he is hiding this week. Can you see him? Mm. I'll tell you where he is next week. So bye for now. Thank you, Sharon. There's a lot to keep us occupied there, which is brilliant. Okay, and um, we're gonna go straight to our prayers now, which James is going to lead us in. Thank you, James. And um, actually, before that, just want to say, if there's anything you'd like us to pray for, if you pop it in the live chat and then we can pick it up. Thank you. James. Let's pray. Father God, we just want to lift our world to you this morning. Mm -hmm. We want to pray for peace. We want to pray for health. But Lord, in particular, we want to pray for healing for all those suffering from the coronavirus at the moment. We want to pray for wisdom for all our governments, all those in positions of authority. Lord. Give them the right words and the right actions at the right time to guide our nations out of this crisis. Help them to provide for those who are most in need at this time. Give our peoples around the world the patience and the perseverance to endure in whatever form of lockdown they are currently in. Help us to share love with one another, Lord. Help us to support one another, to care for each other, even though we are physically separated from each other. Help us each to know that we are loved and valued by you and by each other. Lord, in your mercy. Hear up. Hear up. Father, we pray for our church family and for all our other families and friends. 
it hurts us to be separated from them. We thank you for the gift of technology that keeps us connected to each other. And we pray for the day when we will be able to be reunited with each other in person. Give us strength, give us love until that day arrives. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Father, we pray for ourselves. Give each of us the strength, love and guidance that we need this day and this coming week. As we adapt to completely altered routines, whether we are still at work, whether we are furloughed, whether we are working from home, whether we are struggling or whether we are coping well at the moment. Help us to have what we need each day, to know that we are loved by you, that we can still find ways to share that love with others. Fill us with your joy and your love in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Yes, Father, we pray for all the teachers who at the moment are struggling with knowing what the right thing to do is for their schools, for their staff, for their children, for themselves and for their families. Give them and the government and the education authorities wisdom in the decisions that they have to make in the coming weeks. We pray for Gary in the Royal Derby Hospital who has COVID-19. Lord, I pray that you would be with him, that you would hold him and heal him. Amen. Also in schools, we pray for all the parents and the students worrying about decisions about whether or not to go back into school. All those who are students who should have been taking exams, the exams which would have started from tomorrow. Again, Lord, we just pray, pray for wisdom. We pray for the strength to accept the current circumstances. And we just pray for your guidance throughout all of this, your peace and your love to be known by all. And Lord, for the elderly and vulnerable who are isolated and lonely, for those who are either working flat out and those who don't actually have enough to do for their mental health to have a good balance. Lord, help us. And yes, Lord, we pray for Kelly and for all those who are in their final weeks of studies for university and other education. Give them the energy, the focus, the determination to get through these next few days and weeks, to finish what it is that they have started and to finish it well, Lord. And Father, as we sang this morning, even when we don't see you or feel you, help us to remember that you are working in us and through us, that you are faithful forever and sovereign over us. Because God, our Redeemer, you have delivered us from the power of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your Son. Grant that as by his death he has recalled us to life, so by his continual presence in us he may raise us to eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, James. Now Susie's going to lead us in communion and James will lead us in the responses. Thanks. You're very welcome to join with us as we celebrate Holy Communion this morning. If you're in whole households or individually and would like to take communion, do have bread and wine ready. Before we receive communion together, um, even though we're separated, we are gathered together by doing this action together. Um, we're going to pray for God's blessing upon each and every one of us, and particularly on those who find themselves um, on their own in this, what is a very communal act. And we pray that 
through the doing of something together, we would know that God is with us and that we are joined with the saints, not just gathering at St Auckland's today, but around the world in earth and in heaven. Let us pray. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is always right to give you thanks, God our creator, loving and faithful, holy and strong. You made us and the whole universe and filled your world with life. Holy, holy, holy. You sent your son to live among us, Jesus our saviour, Mary's child. He suffered on the cross. He died to save us from our sins. He rose again in glory from the dead. Holy, holy, holy. You send your spirit to bring new life to the world and clothe us with power from on high. And so we join the angels to celebrate and sing. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Father, on the night before he died, Jesus shared a meal with his friend. He took the bread and thanked you. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. After the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine. He gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood. The new promise of God's unfailing love. Do this to remember me. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ has died. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ is risen. Jesus Christ will come again. Jesus Christ will come again. Father, as we bring this bread and wine and remember his death and resurrection, send your Holy Spirit that we who share these gifts may be fed by Christ's body and his blood. Amen, amen, amen. Pour your Spirit upon us that we may love one another, work for the healing of the earth and share the good news of Jesus as we wait for his coming in glory. Amen, amen, amen. For honour and praise belong to you, Father, with Jesus, your Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. We join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. We take now to share time now to share bread and wine.
we give thanks together. For your many blessings. Thank you, Jesus. For the bread and the wine. Thank you, Jesus. For our family and our friends. Thank you, Jesus. For sending your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, James and Susie. Um, I just um, have a few notices now because it is church family news time. Um, thank you, thank you, lots of enthusiasm. And um, first of all, um, I have a couple of ways in which we would um, like to encourage everybody to be involved. You may have seen the photo montage that we use during communion. Um, and we'd like to refresh that actually. Yeah. We've had a few yeah. weeks of those, um, pictures. We're gonna have some different ones. So we'd like you to send us photos that show what worship looks like in your home. It'd be so lovely for us all to be able to see something of each other, whether it's faces, whether it's objects that inspire us to worship, or whether it's places where we like to do worship or we, we feel close to God. And another way in which um, we would like your participation is um, in actually making Alts Live happen. Please get in touch with Susie or with James if you think you could do a reading or um, if you would be happy to tell us how lockdown is for you. Susie has a few notices for us, I believe. So uh, would you like to do that now, please? Thank you, Rachel. If you do have any photographs, do send them to me at susie at stauckmans.org.uk and we'd love to get them involved in our worship. Just a few notices. Firstly, a huge thank you to James for the first ever Porkmans uh, quiz on Friday night. That's Paul and Orkmans shoved into one word. It was a great um, evening, thank you. And hopefully we'll be repeating that in the forthcoming weeks. Yeah. We're also going to be trialling after church coffee next week and um, there will be more information about that coming out in our church family news and also um, through Zoom, uh, we'll, we'll share the Zoom information at part of the service next week as well. This Thursday is Ascension Day and it marks the beginning of Thy Kingdom Come, um, an international now wave of prayer to pray that God's kingdom would come in our lives, in the lives of those we love and who don't know Jesus yet, and in our communities. And we're gonna share a little video now about what's happening here in Derby in the forthcoming 10 days. Over the past three years, we have gathered as the church is together across Derby to celebrate Pentecost together. This year, we can't physically gather together, but we're going to continue to gather online. We're still going to celebrate and worship and pray. There's two things that we'd love uh, to invite you to join us in. Firstly, for 10 days from Ascension on May the 21st through to Pentecost on May the 31st, we're going to be running a 24-7 online prayer room. We'd love to have an unbroken chain of prayer across those days. We'd love for people to sign up for an hour or for more, to pray at home, to prayer walk, to maybe set up Zoom calls and pray with friends. However, there are resources and guides available to help you, to lead you through that time. But we'd love for those hours to be filled, for our city, our nation, our world to be covered in prayer at this time. The second thing that we're doing is we're going to host an online Pentecost service at 6.30 on May the 31st on a YouTube account called Citywide Prayer Derby. You'll be able to find this service. It's going to be put together by different churches across Derby, all contributing to put together a service that we can all watch and we can gather online to join together to celebrate, to worship, to pray. To pray that God's kingdom will come, that his will will be done in our city and in our world at this time. We are longing for him to move powerfully. 
We're longing to see salvation, to see transformation, to see God's kingdom come. So let's join together, let's worship, let's pray, and let's celebrate Pentecost together. Thank you. That looks it's really interesting. Great thing to get involved with. That's super. And now we're going to look at how life is in lockdown for two different um, households. And we're going to start with Ruth. Ruth, hi. Nice to have you with us. Hello. Um, would you like to tell us how life in lockdown is for you, please? So, so life for me is probably not radi as radically different. To other people in that um, I still go to work uh, because I work in a hospital so actually um, so for me it's not as different um, as, as it may be for other people yeah. um, but there are some things there are some things that I found were very things that I've, I've discovered and um, need to be thankful for so um, I, I was not a zoomer before lockdown happened <laughs> so, so this is a new thing for me um, so actually that's been really good for me and and particularly because we've been able to catch up with family in Australia as well via Zoom so that's been really good and also my friend Matt from university has been doing what he just calls a slow train of um, meditations on the Psalms every morning so that's been really good to do and um, just um, looking at one verse from the Psalms every morning so I've, I've really enjoyed that. Um, there are some things that I miss. Um, I do miss, um, I, I enjoy swimming a lot, so I miss going out for a swim. Yeah. My work is um, a little bit different in that um, normally I specialise in working with older people. Um, the last time I actually worked on an older people's ward was two weeks ago, because actually I've been working a lot more at the front door um, mm. and doing medicine of all kinds so anything and everything overdoses alcohol seizures um heart attacks um chest impatience all all sorts so everything anything and everything yeah and that's been a bit difficult because actually we get because of the shift patterns have changed um, we get a new team almost to work with every day so it's difficult building up a work community yes i can see that will be tricky actually yeah yeah, yeah. Are there any things in particular that you would value prayer for? Um, we're all aware that, you know, our health service is just everybody is working as hard as they can and putting themselves at risk. Um, what, what can we do to pray into that? So just pray for wisdom for all of us that we can support our colleagues yeah. as well as we can and, and to know how to support in the right way I think would be um, uh, it's sort of one thing just to really um, yeah just for the wisdom of knowing how to do that um, yeah. and, and that God would lead on that so that would be really helpful. Fab. Thank you and thank you for joining us we really appreciate it particularly I gather you um you were actually up till fairly late working yesterday weren't you? Yeah so I was up till mid uh, I was on the shift till midnight last night and then I'm back again at four o'clock this afternoon. So. Right yes yeah thank you thank you for sharing your time with us um, and um, now we're going to go to the Brown family who gave us um, shared with us um, worship this morning welcome Browns. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. So how is life in lockdown for you guys? Um, so it's quite strange. So um, I've been furloughed and will continue to be furloughed. Probably one of the last people to go back to work. Working in a restaurant um, oh. means that I probably won't be up back at work until this is nearly all over. Um, and Gail's uh, maternity was due to finish uh, the end Friday. of this next week um, and she's been told that she's going to be furloughed as soon as she comes off maternity as well so we're both furloughed um, which has its um, advantages as well as disadvantages so we are enjoying um, lots of quality time as a family which we would never normally get um, so we're really grateful for that um, but at the same time um, 
talking and entertaining a three-year-old for 12 hours a day is certainly mm. challenging. <laughs> um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Been there. <laughs> Even worse yeah. when you can't go out to play areas. Exactly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you miss play areas, Esther? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I want to go to be so Say I go to be so have gone. Want to go to the soft play when the germs have gone, yeah. That sounds like a very good thing to want, yes. And you could, have you tried doing soft play in your house, on the sofa or on mummy and daddy, maybe? <laughs> We've done obstacle courses, haven't we, in the garden. Yeah. We've put things to jump over and under and things. Yeah. So we've done that. That sounds like a fabulous idea. And I gather you did some artwork earlier, Esther, for your daddy, didn't you? Are you going to show us? Sure. That's, 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 what you've done. that's my daddy. <laughs> it's not your daddy. It says, well, I love my daddy. It says, I love my daddy. It's a heart she made from this morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lovely. I still want to do, um, did you want to say hello to some of your friends that you're missing from church? Yeah. Who are you missing from church? Is it Sophia? I sound to like this. So, You're trying to plug your headphones in, all right. <laughs> we'll say hi to Sophia. And Ariel. And Jonah. Mm -hmm. Say hi. See, wave at the camera then, because they're all watching you. And say okay. hi, Sophia. Hi, so Sophia. <laughs> They'll be jumping up and down in excitement at seeing you. Oh. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> very different. <laughs> wonderful every week we get a completely different view don't we so that's great let's keep them coming seeing everybody and um, what they're doing so adam and gail and esther i expect are going to be leading us now in our final song let's hand over to you God of the city, you're the king of these people, you're the Lord of this nation, you are. You're the light in this darkness, you're the hope to the hopeless, you're the peace to the restless, you are. There's one like our God. be done in this city greater things have yet to come greater things still to be done here you're the lord of creation the creator of all things you're the king above all kings are. You're the strength in our weakness. You're the love to the broken. You're the joy in the sadness. You are. There is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things have still to be done here. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things have still to be done in this city.
there is no one like our God. 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 Great things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done in this city. to be done in this city. Greater things have yet to come. Greater things are still to be done here. Thanks, Adam and Esther. And um, Gail, that's wonderful. Thank you for everybody making involved in making the service happen. Special shout out to um, the people that you all at home can't see, Tim, Naomi and Tony for making, for being our invisible techie team. That's great. And thank you to everybody for joining in, being church together in a new way this morning. I look forward to worshipping with you all next week from your side of the screen. And I'm going to hand over to James now to pray for God's blessing for all of us as we, as we go. So now may the Lord of peace himself give us peace at all times and in every way. The Lord be with us all and the blessing of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. So whether you're staying in your homes or going out this week into essential work, do so in peace, loving and serving the Lord. In the name of Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. Bye.